Shaq, you're the first guy I thought of when I heard this news the other day. Of course, I talked to you and Charles and Kenny later that afternoon, but <clears throat> then I saw that you had gotten a text from Kobe that morning, or Sharif had gotten one. What, um, how do you, how have you been over the last 48 hours? Man? Well, as you know, it's already been the last couple months been really tough. Uh, lost my little sister. Haven't been sleeping. Haven't been doing the normal things I usually do. I work, we laugh, we kid, we joke. When I get back home and look at reality and say she's gone, it was just hurts. So the other day I'm downstairs working out with my son is Shakir and my nephew Columbus. And my other nephew comes in crying. And he shows me his phone. And I snapped at him. I said, man, get that out of my face. Just get it away from me. You know, we live in a world where anything could be photoshopped, anything could be hoaxed. I didn't want to believe it. And then I got the call from you, Charles, Kenny, Everybody called me, and then we found out it was confirmed. And haven't felt the pain that sharp in a while. 47 years old, uh, two, lost two grandmothers, lost to Sarge, lost my sister, and now I lost a little brother. We, uh, our names will be attached together for what we did. People always ask about our relationship, and I tell them it's just like me and Charles. You got two strong-minded people that are gonna get it done that way. You're gonna say certain things. The respect will never be lost. But when it comes to be inside the lines and win, that's what me and him, that's what we did. That's what me and Charles, that's what we do. It was sort of like a triple, triple stabbing to the heart because after you cry and wonder about that, then I get back on the internet, Rick Fox is on the plane. So now I'm, I'm, I'm sick even more. I'm calling Rick, he's not answering. So now I'm, 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 I'm like, what's going on? And then the final blow, his lovely daughter was with him on the helicopter. You know, we, every time I saw his lovely wife and his kids, same thing I do with, with, with Kenny's kids and D-Wade's kids, hi, my name is Uncle Shaq. I don't know if they know me as a basketball player, it doesn't matter, I just, hi, I'm Uncle Shaq, I try to make him laugh. And he would do the same thing. Sharif called me devastated and said, Kobe, just text me to check and see how he's doing. And he used to do that from, from time to time. You know, it just makes me think that in, in life, sometimes instead of holding back certain things, we should just do. Do you wait? Hold on, I'm not done. Oh, okay, go. We, uh, we up here, we work a lot. And I think a lot of times we, we, we take stuff for granted. Like, I don't talk to you guys as much as I, as much as I need to. The fact that uh, we're not going to be able to joke at his Hall of Fame ceremony. We're not going to be able to say, hi, I got five, you got four. The fact that we're not going to be able to say, if we would stay together, we could have got ten. Those are the things that you, you can't get back. And with the loss of my father, my sister, and my thing, that's the only thing I wish I could just say something to him again. Last time I talked to him was when we were here and I asked him to get 50 and he got 60. It's the last time I spoke to him. And I just wish I could have, you know, so it, it definitely changes me. I have to, because I work a lot. You, you, you guys know what I do. I, I, I work probably more than the average guy, but. I just really have to now just take time and just call and say, I love you. 
Rick Fox called, finally called me. He said, man, I love you. B. Shaw called me. So I'm going to try to do a better job of just reaching out and just talking to the people rather than always procrastinating because you never know. Life is too short. I never, I could never imagine nothing like this. I was thinking the other day, I've, I've never seen anything like this. All the basketball idols that I grew up, I see them. They're old. Like I used to be at home when you came to interview me, Ernie. I used to watch the great round, round, round of rebound. Now I'm working with him. I used to want to be Dr. J. He used to live next door to my mother in Orlando. My father used to tell me about the three great big men. I met them. I seen them. And the fact that I, we lost probably the world's greatest Laker, world's greatest basketball player. It's just, I. Listen, people are going to say, take your time and get better, but it's going to be hard for me. I already don't sleep anyway, so. But I'll, uh, I'll figure it out. My condolence goes out to his family, his mom, his dad, his sisters, the other families, everybody involved. Laker organization, I talked to Jeannie and Linda, and uh, people here are hurting, especially in this organization. You know, some people have to get treatment, and some people just just don't understand. Because it hit all of us out of nowhere. I didn't want to believe it. I said to myself, I, I hope somebody, some butt face made this up, and it's not true. I didn't want to believe it. And then after getting all the, com the, the calls, and then you finally feel it was concerned, it just, it just, you know, my spirit just uh, left my body. I just wish I could be able to say one thing to the one last thing to the people that we we lost because uh, you know once you're gone you're gone forever and you know we should never take stuff like that uh, for granted.